How do souls incarnate in this world? How do souls incarnate in this world? Once the soul has been purified, it is ready for a new incarnation. In each age and epoch, a certain number of people are needed to fulfill specific tasks. In the past, these tasks were very particular, and many people were not needed. But now, the H hour is approaching, the time when a change of eras will occur, just as it did before the coming of Christ. It should be noted that before the time of Christ, the world's population was already quite dense. If you look at history, you'll see that the world has faced problems of overpopulation, although not to the extent that we see today. I apologize for using such an analogy, but we need to take a purely scientific approach here. If you don't understand a theoretical aspect or how it works in practice, simplify it by using an analogy you are familiar with. Find a similar problem in nature or human society. Analyze how it is solved. Derive the algorithm of the solution. And then apply it to the problem or theory you don't fully understand. Of course, there will be many inaccuracies, but the general direction of thought will become clearer. This is how you should approach any subject you study or any question with numerous unknowns, especially when many variables and assumptions are involved. Imagine you have a project due tomorrow. Of course, you missed the time to prepare it. You delayed, waited too long to solve the problem, went on holiday, or got sick. Now the deadline is literally tomorrow, and you've made no progress. Naturally, you and your whole department rush to get it done, staying up all night, working faster, and involving more people to meet the deadline. After all, if you don't finish on time, your entire department could be in danger of being dissolved. In other words, the price of the issue is your survival. Exactly the same situation is happening with the current forces in charge. The next H hour is expected in the year 2150, when the transition to a new era will take place. Everything must be done by then. Otherwise these forces will share the fate of the old gods whose cults have become obsolete and forgotten. This is why so many souls are incarnating now, and why the population in general is so large. In the past, the purification process, the journey through purgatory, took three or four hundred years, and it was generally accepted in many religions that a soul would reincarnate only after such a period of time. Now, however, reincarnation can happen almost immediately. A person passes from the physical plane, undergoes a quick purification, and reincarnates almost immediately because everyone is on a deadline, all projects must be completed on time. All people who are born here have specific tasks to fulfill. And all processes are driven by people. They produce results and push time forward. In other words, everything is accomplished through people, all forces, gods, and religions are primarily interested in people as active beings. To ensure that people fulfill their tasks without questioning their necessity, religions introduce canonical rules into human consciousness, fostering a sense of duty to follow the right path and stay on course. In this way, people simply fulfill their tasks. If they are meant to have children, they will. If they are meant to participate in a war, they will. If they are meant to invent something, they will, and so on. The soul enters this world through purgatory after a certain period of time, according to the algorithm of the program. The informational structure enters the world and must incarnate in a physical body. The physical body is made up of genetic material from two structures, male and female genes. At the moment of conception, a single cell, called a zygote, is formed. This cell contains all the genetic information from both the mother's and father's bloodlines. In other words, a person is the quintessence of his bloodline, of all the members of his bloodline without exception. 
The soul enters the zygote at the moment of conception, I emphasize, not at the third month, not at the moment of birth, and not later, at the moment of baptism as some people believe. Such a rule was universally accepted until recently. In general, it is a very beautiful process when seen with astral vision. The formation of a new cell is similar to the birth of a new universe, as shown in the Hubble telescope images. In fact, you can't tell from these images whether it's the birth of a human being or the birth of a universe, it's actually a mystical process, a very beautiful one. The two cells fuse each representing different genes, lineages, and bloodlines. Essentially these two foreign materials are merging into one, creating a kind of explosion, a conflict. And this conflict creates a funnel that begins to swirl around this new structure. It was once believed that the stronger the bloodlines and their informational structures, the more intense the conflict would be causing the funnel to swirl more vigorously and reach higher realms. According to our sevenfold structure, the funnel reaches very high levels. It reaches the level of the causal realm, the level of the buddhic realm, the level of the atmic realm. It is believed that from these higher realms, it selects a soul, it attracts a soul that is exceptionally strong in both informational power and existential volume. Only a very strong conflict can attract such a soul. This intense conflict occurs only between powerful rivals, when the mother's and father's bloodlines come into conflict, creating a massive funnel that reaches into the sky and draws the informational structure, the soul, into the newly formed cell as the third element. So the informational structure we call the soul is introduced into the zygote as a third element. And during the nine months of prenatal development, it regulates which genes become dominant and which remain recessive. From the entire pool of genetic material in the bloodline, the soul selects only those genes that will be beneficial. The soul regulates the whole process, nullifying certain elements and discarding others, making some genes dominant and others recessive. All this happens during the nine months in the womb. There are young souls, and there are weak souls that cannot intervene in this process. In these cases, the decision of which genes will be dominant or recessive is made by the bloodlines of the mother and father themselves. This is where the so-called biological cleansing takes place. The stronger bloodline will prevail. In such situations, where it is not the soul that decides, but the bloodlines of the mother or father, the child born is usually an almost perfect copy of one of the parents. Have you ever seen people like that? They talk the same, they act the same, and they look exactly like one of their parents, mother or father. It doesn't matter. They are exact copies, sometimes indistinguishable. And on the contrary, when a soul intervenes in this process, it chooses the genes for itself. It acquires a specific body and mind. The soul selects exactly the genes it needs from the mother and father, because it comes here with a particular task. And in order to fulfill this task it needs resources that will help it to save time. This means that during the nine months the soul must form its body and mind so that later, when it is born, it won't waste time in unnecessary struggles or in the need to overcome unwanted processes. Accordingly, this natural selection takes place during the nine months. By six months it is usually complete and the growth phase begins. It is at this stage that the child's temperament is determined, along with who they will resemble, their gender, how quickly they will process information, and which hemisphere of the brain will be dominant, left or right. In other words, everything is determined that will later influence the person's talents, abilities, health and development, everything is determined during this period. When a child is born, it is already a finished, complete program. Did I answer your question?